So in general, this is a kind of uh, general um, table to show that how we can and or how, usually in, in building a plant, how we invest, uh, how we estimate the capital cost, okay? Like different classification for that. So we can uh, start with simply with a BFT blood flow diagram and uh, we can, <coughs> sorry, so then we can uh, we can start with uh, with the BFD. Then uh, you know that is a simple diagram gives us very simple information. That then PFD, the process flow diagram that gives us more details, and we can also use PFD plus PNID process flow diagram and piping and instrumentation diagram that is very detailed and. Uh, it can give us a lot of informa detailed information and it can give us the detailed cost that we have in the plant. So, when, uh, uh, okay, for when we, uh, we can, you know, like use existing plant, let's say you are, you are going to fabricate, uh, I mean, uh, construct, uh, build up a refinery. So you can, uh, let's say in Qatar we are going to have a new refinery. So we know that in the in, in the area, like in Middle East, we have a lot of refineries in many countries. So there are some existing plants already. We can get some information about them because whatever we will build will be not very really far from what is already existing in the region because uh, the properties of the oil that we have in Qatar is almost the same everywhere in the region. The climate is the same. Uh, I don't know, like the expenses for workers, for operating costs, like all, all are almost the same order of magnitude, okay? And then, so we can use the existing refinery or plant with blood flow diagram. We don't need to go through the details and estimate the cost of our refinery based on the capacity that we will have. So this kind of evaluation doesn't give us really a very accurate estimation of capital cost. It has an error between minus 15 to 25 percent so whatever we calculate might be different from actual investment that we have and the, the accuracy will be in this way we can also go a bit more details use pft process flow diagram and do some uh, we do sizing for the major equipment okay reactors distillation column those major equipment that we have and we just roughly size them. We don't need to go to the, the, the very accurate exact sizing, just roughly design. And this uh, can give us an accuracy again between minus 20 to 30 percent of the, to the final actual capital investment that we need to put. And for this, we use some generalized uh, chart costs that we are going to talk about them later in this uh, unit. Okay, generalize some chart card, uh, ch uh, charts uh, cost, general chart, charts uh, cost that are produced already by some companies. Uh, then uh, we can even go a little bit uh, more details. Okay, we can do the, uh, the sizing of different equipments, major equipments. We do some calculation for piping, instrumentation, things like that. And we use a preliminary design okay again it has a still high uh, amount of uh, error or low accuracy between minus 15 to 25 percent we can go a little bit more detail which is uh, using the all the information from pfd and pnid process flow diagram and process and uh, 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 piping and instrumentation the diagram in, when we do this, when we use this kind of diagram, we use all the information, all the details. We do the design and finding the specification of almost all the equipments, especially the pri uh, preliminary equipments. And when we do this kind of calculation, we will be really close. We will be very close to the uh, to the actual investment that we need to put so all these methods they give us some idea about how much money that we need to put but as i said we have this kind of accuracy low accuracy between minus 20 or plus 30 it means whatever we calculate from here it might be either 
20% less than what we really need to put or maybe it, it, it is like 30% more than what we really have to put already okay so that's uh, that's the issue but here we get really good uh, estimation of, of the investment that we need to put and we can uh, still go further okay go further and do a very complete engineering job by considering all the calculations here plus uh, calculating the labor that we need to do uh, different contracts uh, that we need to do like operating costs that we have transportation costs taxes you know almost uh, all the things that will be involved in the process that uh, we will be we will calculate and we consider and at the end what we get it is a estimation that is very really close to our actual final investment that we need to put between minus almost like minus minus and plus five percent uh, error between what you calculate and the actual one uh, okay so uh, for the cost estimation okay for the cost estimation uh, we can use different sources okay let's say let's for now just talk about the equipments equipments that we have uh, in the plant okay and we need to find uh, their cost. Uh, let's say we have heat exchanger, heater, reactor, distillation column. We have many equipment. We just need to evaluate their cost. All right. So how we can find the cost of this uh, equipment? Okay. We have different sources. First, very simple, wonder coat. Okay. You want you want to buy a heat exchanger, compressor. You know, like in Qatar, we have few wonders that they sell. They import heat exchanger or pumps from you know other countries you just call them and you tell them i need this compressor i need this heat exchanger with this specification and uh, uh, and uh, how i mean like please uh, please give me a quote how much does it cost so like what they do they go uh, look at the companies the suppliers they have they find you a list of uh, uh, companies that they can you know produce this they can provide it for you and then they give you a very accurate price of that equipment the updated price is a price for that you know like up to that day so it's a very accurate way of finding the price and uh, for that uh, for that uh, when the vendor is uh, want to give you the price he will ask you for exact specific information what will be the size what will be the load the heat duty you know all the specific information the material the operating pressure temperature all those information will be asked from you and uh, or we can use the previous cost for the similar equipment and scale them to the time and size so we can use another way is that we can use some charts some tables that is that list the, the price of different equipments with different size and different years in, in previous years let's say that we have many charts like that that you will see some um, some of them i mean chart or equation so what are those equation so let's say we know that the price of a heat exchanger that was used in the refinery in one of the refinery in Qatar in 2005 the price of that heat exchanger in 2005 uh, for the heat exchanger that had the surface area surface area you know is one of the most important parameters in the design of heat exchanger the surface area in 2005 for the surface area of 100 uh, square meter the price was uh, the price was let's say uh, i don't know um, let's say 10000 10000 dollars okay now that we are in 2020 and if i want a heat exchanger that has 200 square meter area what will be the price there are equations, there are some factors that relates this to this information to each other. There are some equations that we can use uh, 
and we can say that okay if, if in 2005 the price was this in 2020 we will we just need to multiply that number by by a factor by indicator those indicators are available in the internet the company that they do it and you just easily calculate the price of that equipment so this method that we will see in the next slide is kind of uh, is reasonable accurate is not like wonder code but it still is a very good estimation uh, we is very quick we we will save some um, uh some uh, some times you know like to do the calculation but we have to be careful that all this indicator the factors that we will use they have a range of application we cannot just say use a factor uh, indicator for a heat exchanger that has a range of 100 to 500 square meter area to a heat exchanger that has a 2000 square meter right so extrapolation has to be done carefully or so or the door also as I said here we use some equations here we have we can have, we use some charts as well okay that are less accurate but they are convenient you know like they are not very bad but although they are less accurate 